Hey folks, this is Kalani. Blizzard recently announced a whole bunch of changes to the Recruiter Friend system, as well as how bonus experience is going to work going forward. Now, these changes are currently live. They're not on a test realm or going through any form of trial run. This is how the game will work from now on. These changes have sparked quite a discussion across several forum boards, from MMO Champion to Reddit. Overall, it seems like people aren't too happy, and I can understand why. So let's have a look at what's changed, what Blizzard has said regarding their reasons, for making the changes, and how people seem to be taking it so far. Let's talk about the actual changes first. Recruiter Friend used to provide you and your recruited friend with an extra 200% bonus experience for a total of 300% experience earned, or what was commonly referred to as 3 times experience. You would level incredibly fast, so fast that some players used to recruit themselves to level up their alts faster. The first change is to reduce that bonus experience down from 200% to 50%. That's one heck of a slash, but wait, there's more. Heirlooms will no longer stack with the Recruit a Friend bonus either, so the way bonus experience adds up has changed, but there will also be a cap introduced as well. 50% bonus experience will be the maximum you will be able to obtain, which is quite convenient for the Recruit a Friend system as that's exactly how much bonus experience you would gain with the new system, but that means if you already have heirlooms, you don't actually gain any experience bonus from the Recruiter Friend rewards now. You're literally leveling at the same speed as if you just have a full set of heirlooms. Oh, well, not quite, actually. If you already have every single heirloom right now, including able to equip two rings, that would put you at 55% experience bonus, which is now above the cap. So you would only need one heirloom ring to hit the bonus experience cap, which I guess is handy if you didn't have all the rings. There's no point really even trying to get them anymore more, but if you already have two usable rings, you basically just lost 5% bonus experience for no real reason. Understandably, a lot of people were upset and confused that Blizzard is seemingly removing yet another method of speeding up the leveling process. Quite a few fingers were pointed at the level boosts available for $60, saying this was a blatant money grab attempt and now the only fast way to level up is to buy a boost. After quite a bit of back and forth, we got a blue post from Law which says the RAS system was intended as an option for players to bring friends into the game and allow them to level up quickly to get to the end game. Apparently, that's no longer required or relevant thanks to the new level boosts available when you buy an expansion, and the 300% experience didn't really work all that well anyways because people leveled up too quickly. He also said that they recognized that a lot of players using the RAF system were doing so to level up their alts, which shouldn't really be required or sought after. They'll be keeping an eye on things and will keep in touch. So, I would agree with pretty much everything he said. Coming into the game as a new player, even if a veteran friend takes you by the hand and tries to explain everything, 300% experience was really weird before the world scaling was put in place. Now, outleveling zones quickly doesn't matter at all, so half of their argument for removing the bonus experience was more or less fixed with the leveling changes. Sure, those players won't have to go through as many zones if it was still at 300%, but they'd still get to complete the zones they want to. I feel like instead of just removing the bonuses entirely, it should have been a toggle option. But the whole deal about RAF being used as an alt booster strikes very close to home. I've done this several times personally because it's very cheap and easy, especially if you get the WoW battle chest when it's on sale, and it nets me way more levels across several characters when compared to the level 100 boost. You can get a whole server of alts up to level 90 incredibly easily and then just level them as normal from there. Or at least you used to be able to. I also agree that this shouldn't really be a thing. I certainly don't think this was ever an intended use when the system was implemented, but people were doing this for a reason. They had already leveled more times than they wanted to, so they looked for a way to skip over the vast majority of the leveling process so they can start actually playing that character where it matters in the current expansion at Endgame. Having to pay $60 per character to reach the same conclusion is ridiculous. So the level boost doesn't really tick the right boxes when it comes to offering players a way to level up quickly. I hope that the dev team does keep an eye on how things are going and introduces something to speed up the leveling experience for players who have already leveled to max. 
but this isn't the first attack on methods to speed up leveling. If you remember back to the Winter's Veil vale event, one key money-making reward was removed from the Savage Gifts without explanation. The Elixir of the Rapid Mind. These potions provide you with that same 300% experience that was otherwise only available from Recruit a Friend, but it only lasted for 15 minutes. Quite a few key areas of the leveling grind were made incredibly easy with these potions, the most notable was Warlords of Draenor. You can level from 90 to 100 in just a few hours if you had one or two of these potions to chug while clearing out bonus objectives. I don't really know what people are using them for these days, but they aren't going to be around forever. There's no way to obtain the elixirs in the game at the moment, which means their prices were expected to rise and rise and rise until the allied races came out when people would be throthing at the mouth for any way to level up faster. That might not be the case anymore. When the potions were removed from the event, a lot of players were concerned that Blizzard might just remove the effects of the potion altogether and turn the item grey so they wouldn't be any source of 300% experience in the game. Another concern is that with the new bonus experience cap, these potions might not work at all. Thankfully, I have a few of these precious potions stockpiled, and I guess I can put one to good use testing this out. So here we have my Death Knight, level 91. Two quests completed, which both award 20,700 experience. I do have a full set of heirlooms on, just for testing's sake. Completing the first quest rewards the 20,000 experience, and now with the potion, the other quest awards 62,000 experience, so the elixirs are still working as intended. I wonder if they will be the next target though, or if the dev team will just let their stocks dwindle until none are left. But don't worry about them getting too expensive. The potions should be shackled by the price of WoW tokens, as four WoW tokens can buy you an instant level 100 character, and these potions are only 300% experience for 15 minutes. Certainly not worth the same as those instant boosts. I would expect that their price wouldn't rise too high because of this, unless the token prices also spike dramatically. That's one of my potions down the drain though, but at least it's for a good cause. I wonder how long it would take for all of these potions to get used up. I know a few players on my server have hundreds of these things stockpiled. I can't imagine they would just dump them all, so we may still see them for quite a while. An interesting thing about all of these changes is that they don't actually apply to anyone who already has a Recruiter Friend link active. If you're still within your 3 months link time, you will still have the 300% bonus experience. I don't think you will gain the extra benefit from heirlooms, I assume they won't stack even though you'll be rocking that crazy 3 times experience, so if you have an existing link, I would get everything you wanted to get done with it sorted and out of the way, because starting up a Recruiter Friend from this point probably won't be worth it at all unless you're actually bringing a new player into the game, and even then you could just kit them out with a full set of heirlooms and call it a day. I'll be levelling up a few more characters with my super experience as I've got just under a month left on my current recruiter friend, but I wonder what this means about the release date of allied races. A lot of people have been throwing around the 30th of January, and it makes a lot of sense. It lines up with the events in-game, it lines up with the patch release of Final Fantasy to keep players playing WoW instead, and it feels about right. Was this announcement made this week because Allied Races are coming next week, so to prevent players from starting up Recruit a Friend after Allied Races release, they just pulled the plug on it now? Or will they want to wait long enough so those players who have left over time on their Recruit a Friend can't use that to their advantage for leveling Allied Races? If that's the case, we might not see Allied Races for another three months to give every single last account, which is still linked via the old Recruit a Friend, enough time to expire. That would be a real shame because I'm really excited to get my hands on the Nightborn Heritage Armor and probably race change my mage. Part of me does wonder if something bigger is on the horizon though. The leveling changes seem to be more about making leveling more involved and interesting, but has been accompanied by a bit of a problem with how much longer some parts of the leveling process now take. Removing bonus experience sources makes me think they might be planning something based around having multiple max level characters, or maybe they just don't like players leveling up a bunch of alts to make passive gold from the older halls. Either way, I just hope there's an actual plan here, instead of just removing things left, right and centre, until the only option left is a character boost. We could see some type of experience bonus for veteran players, maybe 5% per max level you already have, which caps out at some point. I know a few other games have handled leveling like this, but I guess we'll just have to cross our fingers and wait to see what the dev team has in mind. 
But that's it for this video. How do you feel about these changes? Do you think this is all connected to allied races coming soon? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our Patreon, a link for which can be found in the description below. We're almost at our first milestone, which is super exciting. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.